we acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal people as the traditional custodians of this land and we pay our respects to Elders past, present and future who hold the memories, traditions, culture and hope of Tasmanian's First Peoples. Library Tasmania also pays respects to the resilience and strength of the Tasmanian Aboriginal people and extends that respect to all First Australian peoples. I'd just like to pass you on to Barry and, um, and his talk. Thank you, Thank Susan. You. <laughs> Thank you very much for the invitation to come along today. This is my third year. It is your third year. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and I don't know how many people were here. Oh, can you hear me, Euro? Right? You can't. Is this one better? Yes. yes. Okay. I tend to move around, so I, I, I must remember to stay fixed here if I can. Uh, and always Clifford chased me around at times, but um, <laughs> uh, also on hearing, please bear with me when you ask me a question, I forgot to put my hearing aids in. Um, not that I had to rush to get ready, my granddaughter was there on time to pick me up today, she, she drove me up and she's bringing me home, which is very good. I'm very thankful to be here today. Uh, Six months ago, I didn't think I would be. Well, I had a knee replacement at Calvary Hospital and then 10 days later had mer uh, emergency surgery on, on my body. Uh, I've got a scar going from my chest to my ankles to prove it. And uh, uh, I was a bit, bit the worse for wear for quite a few months. So now I'm on my feet, I'm right, I can even walk without the stick. <laughs> So anyway, um, those of you that were here last year and the year before um, saw my first attempt at describing house histories and in a year Susan asked me if I'd redo it and which I have done today and there's a lot of new information in there but bear with me there are some but, uh, for example, like Newsbank, which Susan has put out, there's a, been a couple of references back to something I've done in the past. So bear with me on that, but I, I do believe they're relevant. Anyway, House Histories 2. You can see one of my, one of my favourites. My mascot's Daffy Duck, but his cousin there, the rabbit, he's He's in there in the hole. What do we have that's, that's new that we can find down the rabbit hole to present today? Some of the reasons for researching house histories. Uh, this came from an American one. It's amazing the information that's globally now on house history. It's absolutely enormous. Uh, it's growing and uh, uh, I, I, I believe it will become as popular as genealogy generally in, in no time at all. Some of the reasons for it, last year I had two invitations from this group to um, a attend their house histories, two old houses out in the country, but unfortunately that went by the by because of COVID. So, so that developed. But here, here's some other examples for, for why you do house histories. And the first group that we're going to look at today, the first piece of information that's emerging are webinars. Uh, these are growing quite dramatically. I, any one of you that's on Google or Firefox, like I am mostly, um, you're coming across these, these webinars that are becoming evident uh, today generally, but particularly in house histories. And there's quite a number of them, and I, I certainly uh, suggest that you have a look at them. Many of them deal with the same information, and um, but there can be some different slants coming from different areas. Firstly, there's the National Archives, and they're, they're a very good uh, source of information. They've been very helpful in the past for me with genealogy and, and house histories. Now they had a webinar in June 
I hope you can see this. It's, I've worked many hours improving the resolution from last year. I had a few complaints, people couldn't read them. But um, they had them in June, but the National Archives are very obliging, as are the library here. Um, I emailed them in Canberra and they sent me back a link and I was able to sit at home in the dressing gown and slippers and, and, and watch it. Uh, has anyone seen it? No? Oh, you saw it the other day. I'm sorry? I, I saw that one the other day. Yeah, did you? It, it deals with Ella and Sue. They, they take you through house histories. Um, unfortunately, they don't deal too much on looking through records. They tend to spend a lot of time on house styles. And, but nonetheless, it's 48 minutes. And towards the end, they do mention three examples. Of, uh, of records that are uh, explained in in other other areas, and but it's it's good to watch. Uh, they do mention one particular property in Georgetown here in Tassie, and uh, it was a, a name change of a street. So it was urging us to remember not only to remember that house numbers change, but also street numbers can and do change. And it's a very informative webinar to watch, and you can watch it in the comfort of your home. New South Wales ha has an excellent one. It's, it's available on Google. Just look up New South Wales State Library and go from there, and you can find it, and there's a link, and you can, and you can watch it. Uh, also, it comes up on Google, and you get those little, little pictures, and, uh, and you just click on those as well. Now, although it's New South Wales, some of the information there is relevant not only to New South Wales but to other states, including here in Tassie. That's some of the uh, areas they suggest you look at. They do mention wills, and we're very fortunate with our own state library here that if you look up the Tasmanian Names Index, uh, you can you can find thousands and thousands of wills, and they're there free of charge. They're, they're great they're great to look at, and a valuable source of information when when doing house histories. <coughs> now, Queensland Queensland seem to be really in the for, forefront of webinars. Here's just four of them. They're on Google like that, and you can click on them and. Sit there to your heart's content and watch them, and, and they are—they are very informative to watch. Very much so. Moving northwards to to Britain, there's there's one on um, in the Norfolk County, and it will be on. You see the two on the bottom here. There's one on next Monday, and another one on the 30th of September. They are free to watch. You just have to book in through Eventbrite, and you can find this through Google. And you can get what they're doing in the UK, some of which won't be applicable to us, but, but there will be a lot of information I'm sure that we can we can use here. I, I've certainly got myself organised to watch them. This is some of the, the things they do, history talks. And... Um, upcoming events, not only for house histories. And, and this is some of their information, introduction to house histories, what, what they're, they're going to talk about and, um, and information that they'll provide. Bookings are required, so like how we use Eventbrite here for the library, we, we need to do so to access this one. Coming back to Queensland again, this is one from South Queensland. They're, they're very active up there in, in house histories, a lot of interest in it. And this one provides quite a lot of information and also a subject that I hadn't even thought of myself until I, I read it in here. It goes into title deeds and information, what to look for. 
Incidentally, going back to New South Wales, they have a webinar on how to read title documents. What to look for, and, 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 and that's excellent. This is in extolling the virtues of Trove again, and also later in, in Newsbank, which Susan's provided. Yet Newsbank is excellent to find information about uh, properties in later years. This was the, the subject that I hadn't even thought of, relocated houses. I, I've, I've done 13, 14 house histories now, and I've, I've got others uh, this year. I haven't come across a relocated house yet, but it's going to happen. And this gives you ideas on, on what to look at to find where the play, place was built originally and where it finished up on its, uh, on its current site. And I certainly commend that site to you if, you if that's what you're looking at. This is Q image, image, imagery. Get around it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We're all familiar with Google Earth, and I use that routinely. But this one up up in Queensland, they they have one of their own, and in fact they have one. Uh, it must be on the next slide. They refer to it. Oh yes, they they do mention it here. They have a high resolution program from April 1936 it goes back to. So it would be fantastic if you're looking for properties up in, uh, up in Queensland. Ideal. Back to the titles office. Uh, they've been very good to me this year. They've been, they've been absolutely fabulous. Whenever I write to suggest that I come in and see them, they, they, <laughs> they think of excuses. To, I've, I've had one flu shot, second one's next week, not looking forward to it. But um, the title, title deeds, they're, they're, they are really very helpful. Very, very helpful indeed. Now, I've, I've put up a, uh, forget, forgive the amateurish work of my IT skills, I've put up a, an arrow there to point. That's, that's where you go to list data, where you go to in the title deeds office to look for information relative to house histories. <coughs> you need to establish an account. You log in up there. It's free. And you, you get a username and a password. Your username, they ask you for your uh, email address and a password. And then after that, you can go for your heart's content. So you get this information. If you get stumped, it's a client, client request. If you get stumped, click on that. It comes up much like the site that we have here at the library to ask questions of. And, uh, and they are very helpful. They, they get back to you and uh, they give you all sorts of, uh, of assistance to get, to get started. Back to the library again, just a reminder on valuation roles. There are many of them are online now. I used to have to drag those big red books out and, uh, and go through them, but they're an excellent source of information. And they couple in nicely with the records that you get from the title deeds office. So it's, a, it's another reference source, as it were, uh, for the information that, that you have. This one I put up today because I haven't looked at this yet. This has suddenly appeared. Valuation field books, taxation office, 1923 to 1964. That's not that long ago. And um, there's information in there that would be helpful for people with house history. It, it does give names and addresses and, and, and other details. Images of your building, well, that's information that you can look at here and, um, and, and hopefully if, if it's 
recorded. You might get some photographs and, and information uh, relative to the property that you're seeking. Drainage plans, we, we mentioned a few of these last year. There are much more on, I don't know whether you've added these and in times, there's, there's a heck of a lot of drainage plans on now all around Hobart. And very, very useful information. There's where some of them are. And this is one that I had up last year. This is Victoria Street. I did a house history on, on the Victoria Hall um, about seven or eight years ago. And, and that was quite interesting to, to read the history of that property of what it was before it became a public hall. Yeah, I haven't seen these before. I got this from Google. This is a private sort of an inquiry agent that will do the information in title searches for you. There are quite a few of them on, on Google and, and uh, Firefox and uh, they'll do the searches in the titles office for you for a fee. I, there are some there that don't bother to list Tasmania, unfortunately. So I found one that did. This one does. I, I put an address up there in Franklin, something, a project I'm doing at the moment. I wrote them an email. Can everyone read that? I wrote them an email and asked them if they were free because on it it says, well, get it free. But nothing's ever free. And he wrote back to me and he said they aren't free, but I um, looked them up. If you want to have a go yourself, do so and so. But, but they'll look it up for you. And they charge a, they have a $50 flat fee plus a fee for um, title searches that are over and above a certain figure or, or any documents that aren't free. Now anyone that's been looking for title office uh, deeds know that in states of Australia all fees are different. Here in Tasmania they still do what they recently started. That's fifty dollars for a title deed irrespective of the number of pages from the present day back to 1972. Title deeds before 1972 are all free. And if you get stuck with title deeds, then uh, uh, they're very helpful at, at helping you out. Remember that with, as, as I put up last year, the title deeds, the volume folio number that's on the top right of it, of it title deed as you look at it is the volume folio number for that particular deed. The volume folio number on the top left hand side is the one it replaced. So that has the information relative to the previous owner. And so on forth back to when they uh, put them into Roman numerals. And if you're stuck in Roman numerals, ask the title's office and they'll convert it to uh, Arabic numbers for you. Uh, these are some other architectural resources that I've since found have been added into the uh, State Library. I, I don't come in as much here personally as I, as I used to, but I, I spent a lot of time in line there. <coughs> Although you're down today for, on some areas for uh, IT services, probably from 10.30 this morning. Now this book, whether you can read it, by William Graham Robertson, 1909. Now this is a fantastic find on my uh, it, it It's excellent. It's here in the library. It's also online. And it's an excellent book if you're doing a property in, in Hobart or in, in some surrounding area. So it even goes down to Hampton Road, up to Angel Street, and, and it, it's excellent. It's handwritten, 
but it's very legible. It's all like that. You can see it, and it goes back into time. And a couple of examples of pages. It's it's 50 pages long, and it deals with properties on the left side, and they mention that left side and the right side of the streets as they go down. It's similar to Wise's directory in that it has cross streets, um, you have Macquarie Street, Barrack Street crossing it, and then it lists all the houses. <coughs> because of the time it relates to, there are only some references to house numbers. <coughs> they weren't that common in those days as we know. But it's an excellent book. Yeah. Here's one example of it. You see, it's just Cross Murray Street. And it mentions places that, uh, I like this one, the Strand Theatre. It was a draper, and he was the first draper to employ female assistants in Hobart. His doing so made a commotion. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been looking through uh, trying to find some reference to it, but it, I haven't yet been able to locate it. But, but interesting information on all sorts of people. The second page deals with Macquarie Street, and down here it mentions the Hutchins School, the original one, and when it was built, and at Barrack Street corner was one of the early public pumps. Had a water pump there. Remember, not all houses had <coughs> kitchens with water. So you had to come down or send the servant down and, and get them to fill up. And there was a pump there on that corner of uh, Macquarie and, and Barrack Street for many, many years. So it has a lot of history. It also has a lot of history of different people's names. People that lived there there's even some accounts of a man that married a Mrs. So-and-so in a certain time and gives her previous married name. And, and there's a lot of information for different properties. And if you're looking there, I certainly urge you to have a look at this book. It's fantastic. That's the old Hutchins School, of course. When, when I first moved to Hobart, yes, I'm a, I was born in Sydney. A tower up there. I lived in that for three weeks. <laughs> it was a spooky place, isn't it? It was cold, and, uh, but uh, but it was good. I enjoyed it. And here are some examples of early water pumps. <coughs> that that was what's on that street. So I thought that's a bit of history. Remember the slides last year. I, I didn't put them in this year. But if you're going to have a book on your house or the one you're looking at. Colour it up a bit, put a bit of flavour into it. Um, who was there, what sort of dress they had, what they did, how they cooked. And, 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 and this, this makes your book come alive. It's not just a series of facts. I mentioned Trove again because uh, just to remind us, of the Mercury and and the coverage that they have, plus plus other newspapers. Mostly they only go up to about the 1950s or thereabouts, except for the Women's Weekly, for some reason they've got them for a longer period. And then there's a gap because I'm told because of uh, copyright. I don't know what that means. I know what copyright means, but I don't know what it means in relation to this. And then of course, you have Newsbank that comes in uh, from about 2000 or late 1990s, which is useful information. This was something I found regarding house numbers. This is, was taken from a newspaper in the 1920s. And it mentions that a Parisian first came up with the idea of house numbers in 1512. So they go back a fair way, although we haven't used them here in Hobart for 
uh, until later years, about the 1950s mostly. It mentions in Germany the, the quaint way they had of numbering houses. And, and of course in Japan, there's one there about how they numbered houses. When the next house was built, they put the number of the one next to that and so on. And <coughs> so you didn't always get the house numbers going sequentially. And another piece of nostalgia, has anyone got a, uh, a mile lemon in their garden? I've got, I've got two, and uh, I quite enjoy the mile lemon. And this is how the, the mile lemon came about. It was actually grafted in Canberra uh, in 1952. <coughs> came from a Queensland, they grafted a Queensland lemon to a citronelle. And that's how the first Maya Lemon came about. So there's history that you could put into, uh, <coughs> excuse me, your uh, house history. Oh. The street names, well, we have mentioned that. Be careful of street names, they do, they can and do change. This particular book started life, the house was in Veterans Row. It's, it's now Murray Street. There are, there are examples of them. Always look for the lot numbers and stick to your lot numbers. They never ever change. And, and while you've got your lock number, you, you know you're on the right track. Just another example in the libraries of information there if, if you sit at the computer and go through Google. These are, are more valuation roles that I haven't had a look at as yet that I've, that I've found that have been added. The, these are about the from 1950 to 1978 in different areas of the Hobart district. Look for books. There's quite a number of books on Google regarding house house listing. The interest is growing rapidly. Uh, I mentioned Trove again. Uh, Trove's tra tra fantastic site. We're very blessed to have that and uh, it, it's information that's particularly useful in house histories. Uh, here's some information here regarding Trove, and the reason I put this up is it gave me a clue regarding word, word filters. When you're looking for a property, and I, I spend a lot of time on Trove and News Bank going through looking for them, and you try and filter your information or your questions down sufficiently to zero in on what you're looking for. And here's one that suggests to look, put in the words bounded, bounded by boundaries. And, and that'll take you more, it'll zero you in more to the information that you're looking for. Also in Trove, if you're looking for an address, start with the address, say 17 Smiley Street, uh, Franklin. That doesn't make any sense. Put it in inverted commas. Then you'll get everything for 17 Smiley Street, Franklin. If you don't put the inverted commas, commas you'll get information for, for that, plus 17, plus Smiley Street, or Smiley Street, you get thousands of them, so narrow it down. Local information is great. This was one I did in Blackman's Bay about 10 years ago, might be a bit earlier. Um, and this was a local lady that wrote to me and gave me some fantastic information. So you get these people by looking through your uh, electoral rolls, 
for people that are close by the property that you, you're searching. Make sure they're still alive and, and then uh, go and see them or email them or phone them. <laughs> and I've done this all over Australia. It's amazing information that I get. Uh, I, I got a, a, whole, oops, a whole load, a big buff covered envelope from a place out in country New South Wales of a person that was born in Tasmania and lived in the property and, and sent me all this information and photographs. And, it was enormous. It nearly filled my book. It was fantastic. So it's amazing what you can get. All you have to do is write. You can't get shot for asking, can you? Now yeah, this was really, really a, a great find. I don't know if the Hobart Library has a similar one. I haven't. I haven't found one as yet. But this was a uh, a, a, a book or leaflets or whatever. It's quite a number of pages in it. I've taken a few of them on Launceston properties. And it's a revised edition. So they did this one in 2016. There's, there's, there must be an earlier one kicking around there as well. And that's the contents of it. As I said, it's quite a number of pages in length. I can't remember what it is now. It goes into all sorts of different areas that we look at, assessment roles, valuation roles, electoral roles, and so forth. But it, it's absolutely fantastic to, to read. That's some of the directories that it goes into. And these co <coughs> cover the time period from 1867 to 2008, which is an enormous period. And, and it's, it's there, it's all online. You read it to your heart's content. And, and it's really excellent, excellent if you're looking uh, for a property in our northern capital. That's some more information for them. Um, they do mention building styles, which that webinar from the National Archives went into in great detail, but it, it's all there. I don't remember at time, so I refer back to that. And uh, a lot of information available for properties up in the north. This is some more maps, land grants, and so forth that we have here as well. But it's a, but it's a reminder uh, of information that's available online. This was another drainage plan, and as I mentioned, the library has really expanded on this. This, this is one that was in uh, Battery Point. There, there's Arthur Circus. And look at all the properties that goes into it. Excellent information and, and a proof source for you for whatever projects you're doing. Phone directories again. Phone directories in the library are available from 1906 to about, no, no, I didn't put it down, but to about 2008, I think. Now, we, we were very much ahead of the game here in, in Hobart. Um, Alexander Graham Bell made his first telephone call in 1867. <coughs> we here in, in Hobart had our first phone exchange in 1880. And that was between Mount Nelson and Hobart. And uh, so we were very much ahead of the game. And there are quite a number of early phone books upstairs on the second floor that um, are on microfiche and have, have names and uh, addresses of people in early times and your property might be listed. And this is one that I, I did some years ago and it is listed there as well. And oh, that's down at the bottom here. I was looking for this person, 1954.
Yeah. Is anyone, did anyone go on to the webinar for the Australian government for Be Connected? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, this was advertised only recently. I, I put it in today, although it doesn't mention house histories, it mentions genealogy, family history. So I think it's only a matter of time before house histories will be included into it. And again, it's, a, it's in another webinar form. Um, oh, that sort of got in out of context. That's another book that, that uh, for the National Archives. But Be Connected gives you an idea of family history tools, what to do, what to use. Also the, f the free tools that are available. And if you log in and sign up, which is free, uh, They'll give you a uh, send you a free ebook. That's the information on the ebook there. That's available, and it's well worth watching. And although it's on genealogy, there are probably clues there that you get for your house history. And as I mentioned, it, it may be only a matter of time before. Uh, house history becomes available. I put this in because that's part of B Connected, but Genicom and Geniet or Geniet uh, are sites to have a look at too. They'll give you a certain amount of information up to a point, and then after that, you have to have to pay for that as well. <coughs> And of course, we are indebted to the, our own library for the availability of uh, both Ancestry and Find My Past. And Ancestry we can access from home, I believe, until December. And Find My Past is on uh, um, available at the library if you go in there. And, and on home. And, and at home. Find my past. Only till the 31st of August, though. Oh. So if you, if you want to look at it at home, um, you've only got till the 31st of August. Well, also, too, while I'm on that, I'm a member of a family history group that meets at the Kingston Library every Friday afternoon uh, from 1.30 to 4.30. It's, it's quite uh, relaxed and laid back and anyone's welcome to come there if they want some help on um, family history and, and myself on, on house history. And uh, uh, we meet there, in fact, we're the oldest group, well, not only the oldest group, but the longest group ever uh, being at uh, Kingston Library. This is still on uh, Be Connected, how, how to connect up and uh, establish your, uh, your login details. We mentioned before England and Norfolk. Globally, house histories are taking off. There's a lot in America. And this family search, which we have here in Australia, this was taken their Canadian one. And they mentioned down here, um, Run a reverse trace with the place of residence and use the filters to find movements of your ancestors. And I thought, oops, haven't seen this on our family search. So I'm going to write to Utah and uh, I've, well, it may be there, I better check first and then write to Utah and, and ask them if they're going to put this up for us to use. That, that could be another uh, new source. Now, <coughs> We, um, this is the State Library in Victoria, and you go, oh, 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 oh. but it's amazing what other state libraries have that's applicable to Tasmanians. And this one mentions land musters, Van Diemen's land, and then up here to 
there's a reference about Tasmanian people. And as you know, up on the, on the second floor, there is the paracensus of 1828 of New South Wales. And that encompasses all of Tasmania as well. So there's names in that. Uh, because Tasmania was still a part of the colony of New South Wales in those days. I put this in, this is part of the one in, in Victoria, because it mentions the difference between a census and a muster. And there are musters upstairs, probably online, uh, of early musters that were here. I think there's one about 1808 or 1811, and it deals with not only those that came out with David Collins, but also the settlers that were here in Tasmania, living in, in Hobart, uh, and waving to Collins and his crew as they went past. This is some more information on the one that's available in Victoria. It mentions New South Wales and Tasmania up the top. It also mentions land muster records for Van Diemen's land. Uh, census for Newtown in Hobart. Quite a lot of information and there it is all sitting in the Library of Melbourne. I don't know whether we have it here. It's, I'm not sure. But um, we are going to finish a little, a little earlier. I've got through it and then we can ask any questions, but that's that's the information that I've uh, been able to uh, to find at the moment that's current that I'm currently using. The webinars, as I mentioned, are a, uh, a fabulous resource. Uh, I've been playing with animation. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> um, there's, there's so much there that's available, but I certainly urge you to, to have a look at those webinars. Uh, get yourself a nice hot coffee and, and sit down and watch it in front of your, uh, your computer. Anyway, that's, that's what I have that's available today. And I would certainly hope that, uh, well, I thank you for sharing this information. And also, I hope that you're successful in your whatever projects that you're doing. If you get tired of it, as many people do, I've got a little sheet on there. If you're interested, you can fill it out, the information of what you're looking for, and send it to me, and I will do it for you on your behalf. I charge a flat fee. It's not exorbitant because I'm a pensioner and I can't earn more than $6,000 extra per year and so I have to keep well within that range. So I'm quite happy to do it for you but please, I'm, I'm not like who you, who do you think you are, do it in one hour, it, it does take about three to six months for the property and of course depending where it is in Australia and, and I've also done some in New Zealand as well which has been excellent. Anyway, thank you very much. That's great.